All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and in this video, we're going to take a look at the ambiguous case for the law of sines to help us solve oblique triangles. If you don't remember what an oblique triangle is, it just means a triangle that is not right. Now, one of the first things that you want to do is when you see the direction solve the triangle, you want to think to yourself, self, I have to determine if there are zero, one, or two triangles, and then after that, I've got to find all the missing stuff for each one of the triangles. Now, speaking of stuff, let's go ahead and get our calculator stuff sorted out so that we're ready to go. First thing you want to do is get your calculator set up so that it will round to the tenths place and is in the degree mode. Speaking of degrees, in order to find a degree symbol, you want to use the second apps button to get to the angled menu. Now, if you're using a regular TI-83, then there is no apps button. What you have to do is hit second and then the matrix button. Now that your calculator is set up, let's go ahead and take a look at some other review stuff. This is all prerequisite knowledge, things you guys should totally know. First, you should know the sum of three interior angles of a triangle is 180. Next thing that you need to know is that supplementary angles have a sum of 180 degrees. So if you're given one angle, you can find its supplement very quickly and easily. And then the last thing you need to know is the domain restriction for inverse sine or arc sine is from negative one to one, which means when you're using your calculator, when you type in arc sine of blop, that blop, whatever the value is of the blop, that's got to be within that domain restriction of negative one to one. So here we are with example number two. Solve the triangle with the given information. B equals eight, C equals 10, and the measure of angle B equals 65 degrees. Now, of course, the very first thing that you want to do is draw a triangle to represent the situation. The second thing that you need to do is make this chart that's below the triangle. And in that chart, what you're going to do is fill in all of the given information that's provided with the problem. So first thing that we're going to do is set up our ratio, sine b over b equals sine c over c. We're going to substitute in our given information. Cross multiplying, we get sine c equals 10, sine of 65 degrees over 8. And then to solve this, we're going to use our calculator to find the measure of angle c. And we're going to get arc sine the quantity 10 sine of 65 degrees, all of that over 8. Now after you hit enter on your calculator, you're kind of probably be like, what? You get this domain error and that. And why do we get that domain error? Because you typed everything in correctly, you're in the correct mode, you set everything up correctly, so why do we get that? Well, that is because if you take a look at this particular value, just for this middle, for our angle, 10 sine of 65 degrees over 8. That piece, this piece right here, remember, that's got a restriction of negative 1 to 1. So this value right here that we're given, that's definitely greater than 1, which means because that is greater than 1, when we take a look at the arc sine of 1.1, we get that error message, which means angle C does not exist. Therefore, we conclude that the number of possible triangles is zero. We're not going to have any. So there's nothing to solve in this triangle because we don't have a triangle. That's it for this example. Thanks for watching, and you guys have a great day. Peace out.